Good evening, writers. It's Friday, May 19th, and welcome to the first video in our next series, The Minutia of Writing. In comparison to my last series, which focused on very big topics like entire writing mediums and how you can tell stories through them, this time we're going to be a lot more small scale and talk about very particular things that you have to do when you're writing. This series is going to focus primarily on the written word, specifically through pro storytelling like in novels or short stories, but the lessons learned here can apply to a lot broader subjects such as academic writing, emails, or even the way that you talk about things online. We're going to be focusing on things like sentence structure, word choice, and how to say what you mean when you're talking in the written word. And so we're going to be focusing on extremely basic concepts, but exploring them in a very thorough way. And we're going to start with the most vaguely and ill-defined concept known to writing, the paragraph. Quick side note before we begin. Most information about writing paragraphs is geared towards academic or argumentative writing. It's about topic sentences and developing an opinion. And this focus on argumentation and proving a point isn't always relevant to creative writing because as a writer, you're not necessarily developing arguments or trying to convince people of something. You're telling stories and developing ideas that aren't necessarily controversial or require backing up with sources or arguments. And even if you're writing argumentative papers or academic papers, you have to remember that as a writer, you are allowed to break the rules if you have good reason. All right, then back on track. Functionally, a paragraph is defined as a collection of sentences arranged together in a single block of text, such as the one you see here. Look at that. Nice little paragraph. There's words and they arrange them together. Unlike a sentence which has very explicit rules on the way that they have to be arranged, rules that you probably learned if you've ever learned a second language, paragraphs have no explicit rules that determine how they are created or how they flow. This means that there's no clear right or wrong way to structure a paragraph. It's up to you to determine what's best for your case. That being said, there are general guidelines and things you have to keep in mind in order to construct generally good paragraphs. This is why paragraphs are so hard. They just like are a thing that you have to do, but nobody really tells you how to do it. Which brings up the question, why do we use paragraphs in the first place? Why don't we just have a text aligned in the sentences as the way it is? When you speak, you don't really hear paragraphs. Why would we represent them in the written word? This one's fairly simple. Have you ever tried to read a blog post on the internet or a comment which has absolutely no line breaks? It's just line after line of text, scrolling, scrolling. You don't want to read that. You encounter that and you just know that that is not something that you want to encounter. It's hard to keep track of where things are going and the sentences start to blur together in your mind and you have no idea how things are supposed to progress. And that's why paragraphs are important. They add clarity to your writing. They add a structure to it that makes it easier to interpret and to understand. They give the reader clear and explicit breaks to your argument and help them sort all of your ideas into discrete segments. And it makes it easier to understand when the reader knows they have to understand this and then move on to understanding this. So if they struggle to like figure out what's going on here, they just go back to the start of the paragraph and try it all again. If you don't have paragraphs, they don't know when they started to lose track of what you're saying. They don't have any structure to say that, oh, I must have misread a sentence here. Let's go back to the start of the paragraph and try again. Of course, the problem here is that there's no explicit rules on when paragraphs need to begin and end. So it's up to you to determine where those breaks happen and for you to determine which ideas are closely related enough to belong together in a paragraph in the first place. So it's important for you to structure paragraphs that have some sort of unity of concepts. One paragraph, one idea, one argument one point you're trying to make. And so paragraphs are there to add structure to your readings and to keep all of your ideas in self-contained boxes that makes them easy to identify. No matter how messy the ideas or how complex the sentence inside of it is, if it's contained in a nice and neat box, you're better able to understand what's going on inside of it. Like all of these messy shelves behind me, that's a mess. You have no idea what each individual thing is, but at least it's somewhat sorted into individually and understood little boxes. So hopefully now you understand both why paragraphs are important and how they help structure your ideas to make them more easily understood. So now let's get on to talking about how they work and how to make a good paragraph. Classic paragraph creation rules involve three things that everyone likes to talk about. A topic sentence, development of ideas, and a concluding sentence. This structure is flawed. It's akin to saying that paragraphs have a beginning, middle, and end with only the vaguest of clues about what they do and how they function to get your ideas across. But it's still a generally good framework to begin with. So we'll start with the beginning, the topic sentence. The best way to craft paragraphs is to understand how they begin and when they should end. The first sentence of a paragraph is vital because it establishes two discrete things. First, what your paragraph will be about, and second, how it's going to relate to the paragraphs that preceded it. In creative writing, these topic sentences tend to be a lot less explicit about that than they are in academic writing. For example, academic topic sentences usually look something like this. 
The other question asked by the writer, where are all the dogs now, functions not as a question but rather a statement on the lack of attention being paid to the caretaking of these dogs. So let's take a look at that. You have a clear sense about why this relates to the other statements. You're talking about the other question asked by the writer, implying that we had talked about something earlier, which I'm assuming that we did because of this topic sentence. And you know what this paragraph is going to be about. It's about explaining why this quote here is not actually to be taken literally, but rather as a sarcastic statement made by the speaker. This is what topic sentences look like. This is how you bridge paragraphs and ideas together. You start from one place, connect them to the other place where you can start developing that new idea, and then do it all over again in the next paragraph. In creative writing, it's usually better for your topic sentences not to be so on the nose and allow a little bit more freeform to them. Take, for example, at that moment, he began to wonder why nobody was watching the dogs. You can see that this accomplishes all the same things as the previous questions. And now this character is going to be talking about why is nobody watching the dogs? What? Why is? What's with this oversight? What's this? Why does nobody care about where the dogs are? Where's the dogs? In conclusion, dogs. Topic sentences are important because paragraphs are meant to give structure to your arguments, and this is one of the main ways that they do that, by making sure that self-contained ideas are well packaged and delivered to the reader. Of course, learning how to end paragraphs is also important, but that being said, concluding sentences isn't necessarily the best way to go about it. You don't always want to summarize everything that the reader has just read. They should understand it. They shouldn't need a summary if the argument was created properly. And so sometimes it's better in both style and clarity to consider your ending sentences as transition sentences. They are not really meant to wrap up the ideas of the paragraph, but rather more to bleed those ideas into that of the following paragraph. That being said, Transition sentences aren't crucial ingredients to paragraphs. Paragraphs should end when the idea ends, when the one thing holding the paragraph together has reached its natural conclusion. And when that happens, sometimes all you really need to do is just end the paragraph there, start a new line, indent, and then go on to your next paragraph. And if you have a really strong opening sentence, then that one can be doing double duty as both that transition sentence and topic sentence. But wait, hold on a minute. When are ideas at the natural end? How closely related do ideas have to be to count as belonging in a single paragraph? How long should our paragraphs be? How short should they be? These questions are at the heart of why paragraphs are so difficult to define, because there are no clear answers. Your answer to these questions relies a lot on your creative judgment. It's up to you to decide which ideas you want to be expressed together and how you want them separated, in what order and with what emphasis. And it's up to you to determine when a paragraph is getting too long or if it's too short. But to help you out with making these decisions, here's a couple notes. In order to make an effective long paragraph, your idea has to be quite fast paced and easy to follow. Each sentence has to flow naturally to the next in a way that leaves the reader without any confusion or ambiguities. The more complex your ideas and the sequence of your arguments and developments, the more time your reader will need to process all of it and they may even have to read it over again. So if your ideas are contained in a long and complex sequence of events, in a lengthy paragraph and your reader loses track and misses a step somewhere along the way, well they have to go all the way back to the beginning of the paragraph to get through all of that. And so if you have a complex and difficult concept buried inside of there, that can be really jarring if the reader has to go through all of this stuff in order to reach that again, especially if they have to do that more than once. And so if you have a complex idea, you want to put it in a paragraph that's as short as possible, which doesn't mean that it should be short. It just means that it shouldn't be longer than it has to be because longer paragraphs tend to be more exhausting and confusing than shorter ones. You don't want your ideas in that paragraph to also be exhausting and confusing. That just leads to readers getting exhausted and confused. No surprise. On the other hand, to make an effective short length paragraph, the idea has to be both wholly developed and easily understood in its entirety with only a single or a few sentences. These short paragraphs serve extremely well as interruptions to other ideas or as standalone ideas meant to drive home a point, especially if that development has happened to a certain extent in the preceding paragraph. Take, for example, this short paragraph. He died that day. It's short and its ramifications are clear and immediately understood. You don't need additional sentences to develop the idea. It needs no additional context or clarifications. It is a single idea expressed as plainly as possible that is understood in its most deepest ramifications by the audience. And that, in a nutshell, is how you determine when a paragraph is complete. So that, in a nutshell, is how to make effective paragraphs. Do you have any questions? Think I missed something? Leave a comment below. So thank you for joining me on this episode of The Young Writer's Vlog. Make sure to catch the next episode, adjectives and why they're terrible things that you should never use ever, no exceptions. There are exceptions. Till next time, have a good night and keep on writing. Good evening, writers. It's Friday, May 19th. I'm pretty sure it's May 19th. Let me check. It's actually kind of important. It's May 19th. Awesome.